Hey everybody, uh, welcome to your video on finding the area between two curves. This will be um, our first introduction to applications of integration. We're going to spend um, a while, a couple weeks in this. We'll talk about area in 6.1 and then in 6.2 and 6.3 we'll talk about uh, volume, which you know is the obvious next extension after you talk about area. Um, so in class, in this video uh, right now, I'm going to kind of try to explain the basic concept for you guys, like what what this is about, how do we find it, and then I've got four um, examples for you. All right, so the problem is to find the area between two curves, so we're going to start with a couple friendly calculus curves, and yeah, it can't get any easier than this one. So the first curve, f of x, or you know, y is equal to x squared. If you think about that in your head, all right, y is equal to x squared, that's just a parabola. All right, so in red here, this will be the first curve. All right, now we want a second curve on top of that. All right, so the second curve will be g of x, or y is equal to the square root of x. Now the square root of x looks kind of like a wave. The way I like to think about it is like a, there's a wave and there's going to be a surfer on top of the wave. It's kind of just a joke, but it looks like a wave. And in blue, this blue curve right here all right, um, is square root of x. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to find the area bounded bounded by where these curves intersect. All right, so let me zoom in, we'll get a closer look. So the blue curve is a square root, and underneath is x squared. All right, And you'll notice, just for this little part right here, the square root of x curve is, and you'll hear this come up again, the top curve, and x squared is the bottom curve. All right, so if we're looking at where they intersect, we're interested in finding the area that's shaded in this blue here. All right, so the area bounded by these curves. Right, so we want to find this blue shaded area. So the reason we need calculus is there's no you know, like formula, like the area of a square is just side squared. There's no formula for this curve right here, so we need calculus for this. Or for, no, no formula for this shape here. Sorry. All right, so we're going to start by letting h be the distance between the two curves. So this value of h all right, is determined by the top curve and the bottom curve. And if you look at all these different lines here, you know, where you are between the curve, h is different, okay? The height changes, so height changes as we move left to right. Like here, the height is pretty pretty long, pretty high, and here the height is uh, shorter. All right, since h is a distance from the upper to lower curve, to find that height, the distance, all right, you would simply subtract the two y-coordinates or take their difference. So we're going to say h, the height, is y upper minus y lower, so let me go back. So that you take the top y value and you subtract away the bottom y value. All right? Or, well, our top curve was f of x minus our bottom curve we call g of x. All right, so that means that h of x, if I go back, the top curve was the square root of x and the bottom curve was the parabola. All right, so it's top curve, which is the square root of x, the blue, minus the bottom curve. All right, that's always going to be important, the bottom curve, which is x squared. All right, so that's our height. All right, so we can find the total area between the curves by integrating h between the points of, this is important, where they intersect. So like, if you remember the fundamental theorem of calculus, find the area under the curve, all right? Um, you would just integrate. But now here, what you're really doing is, is using the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area underneath the blue curve. And then really what you're doing is you're subtracting away the area underneath the red curve. I mean, that's it. All right, so we have to figure out where the two curves intersect. Well, this one's easy. We'll do some harder ones where it's not so obvious where they intersect. They obviously intersect at the origin, so that's x is equal to 0. And they intersect at the point 1, 1, which is the x value 1. So the x values of 0 and 1. All right, so that means the area between the curves. Area from 0 to 1. So the, our bounds of integration, if I go back, are the first x value all the way to the second x value. All right, across the height. All right, so zero and one are the starting end values of x. All right, so further, this area here now we can find by integrating from zero to one the top curve minus the bottom curve. So the square root of x minus x squared with respect to x. This is incredibly easy. This is just the general power rule to integrate both these. All right, so using the fundamental theorem of calculus, this right here. This you'd write as x to the 1 half, then you'd get this when you integrate it as a general power rule, 
x squared obviously integrates as x cubed over one third, or excuse me, over three, or one third x cubed. So just plugging in one, and then subtracting and plugging in zero, you get two thirds minus one third, where the area is one third. So what I'm saying is if I go back, this purple shaded area right here, that's that shaded area right there, is just equal to one third. It's not too bad. Actually, it's just the fundamental theorem of calculus, just where you take the top curve minus the bottom curve. That's literally it. All right. So let's find the area. We'll do a harder example here. And let me go back and say, if you look at the H's that we drew here, these were, and this is important, vertical height. Vertical height. All right. So they were vertical rectangles that were drawn here. Okay. So now going back to where we were. All right, let's find the area between, now this is weird, f of y, so our previous ones were f of x. All right, so I'm flipping it now. x is equal to the third root of y, and g of y, all right, is equal to x, is equal to 2y squared. Yikes, weird. All right, let me draw these for you guys, okay? So you need to graph the functions and see the defined area. That's incredibly important. All right, notice how these are defined in terms of y now, not in terms of x. All right. This right here, this, this blue line right here, this is x is equal to the third root of y. And in red here, this is x is equal to 2y squared. All right, so obviously this makes sense because it's um, defined in terms of y. It's like a parabola flipped on its side. And this right here, uh, third root of y, all right, just like is, I mean, if you were to think about it this, if you were to cube each side, you get y is equal to x cubed which is what you see right here. All right, so again, let's just zoom in. All right, we want to find where um, the area bounded here, where the two graphs intersect. So like this little lotus-looking thing in here, it looks almost, it's important, it looks almost like the previous one, but it's going to be a little, little different. Okay, so notice that the upper intersection, this is important. The bottom intersection is still the origin. So the x value, or in this case, the y value will be 0, 0. But this up here, I don't know what it is. It doesn't fall like on the nice uh, like 0.11. All right, but we'll come back to that. That's not a big deal. All right, so we'll find those later. We'll find the intersection. But first, we need to define h. So here, because it was defined in terms of y, all right, we're going to have horizontal height. All right, we're going to define our h this way. All right, so now previously when we did vertical, it was top minus bottom. All right, so here. This is going to be our, in quotation, our top graph, and this will be our bottom graph, all right? Or right graph, left graph. All right, so notice that h is the difference between the two x coordinates here, not the y coordinates, all right? Because we have a horizontal um, height here. All right, so x, the height when you have horizontal is x sub right, so it's the right graph minus the left graph. Well, this, our right graph here, that was the third root of y. And our left graph here is uh, 2y squared. So our height is just the third root of y minus 2y squared. OK, that, the height's not too bad. But no longer are we going to use the x values for our bounds of integration. We're going to have to use our y. So we have one y value here is 0. But like, what's this y value over here? I don't know. OK. So notice the distance uses coordinates from the right function minus coordinates from the left function. Great. All right. To have a distance be a positive number, you must always subtract the smaller one from the larger one, which is exactly what we did here. All right. So in the first example, we integrate from beginning to end. We see that the origin is one point of interse intersection. So here, the origin. But how do we find the y value up here? All right. So we need to find the other point. So if you were like, how do I find where the two graphs intersect or where they're equal? Notice how I highlighted that word equal. All right. To figure it out, you just set them equal to each other. All right. So to get rid of the third root, you cube both sides. You get y is equal to 8 um, times y to the sixth. Um, solving here for y, you get y to the fifth is equal to 1 eighth, like dividing y over and then dividing eighth over. So the other y coordinate, this is crazy, it's the fifth root of 1 eighth. All right. We'll actually leave it as that, but if you wanted to plug it in your calculator, you would get this. Okay, so finally the area is this. We're going to integrate along the y, so it starts at 0, 
And then we saw that the other y value they're equal at is the fifth root of 1 8. The height of y dy, well the height of y, you see right here I'm going to go back, was just this, right? The right minus the left, okay? And I won't bore you with the simple calculus in this, but if you were to uh, integrate both these very easily using the general power rule, and then plug in the bounds of integration, this is what you would roughly get. But as you can see here, the integration part is not the hardest part. Um, setting it up is the hardest part, right? And if you look here, what's mo what makes it easiest setting it up is the graph. If you can get the graph set up correctly, it's, it, the rest of it kind of falls into place. Okay. All right. So good time to use your calculator, obviously. All right. So note that in this example, the limits of integration are the y values, and the integrand here was a function of y, different. All right, so vertical um, heights, x, horizontal, y. All right, so several points should be made, okay, just so for your reference. All right, graph the functions, seriously. Uh, that'll make it easier for you. Uh, in your web assigned homework here, they some of the problems ask you to correctly identify the graphs first. That helps. All right? You can also use your graphing calculator. All right? Decide whether you work in vertical or horizontal distance. All right? Use the one that is the easiest for the problem. This may not always be x. I will tell you this though, in your web assigned homework you'll almost want to, always want to use x. Like in the next two examples, well, we're just going to use x. All right, so distance is always positive, so remember to subtract the smaller value from the larger one, All right? whether we're using x or the y. All right, let me do uh, two more examples here. All right, so I'll do one with E. So find the area bounded above by, so I'm telling you above by y is equal to e to the x, and below by y is equal to x, All right? And bounded on the sides by x is equal to 0, and x is equal to y. All right, this graph is incredibly important, all right? So the region shown in the figure, sorry, that got cut off. The upper curve, so I'm telling you above is e to the x, so that's e to the x. Below, y is equal to x. Well, that's just a straight line. All right, notice how they don't intersect. Okay, not, not at all. But I'm still telling you between 0 and 1. So obviously to find the area here, look at, look at your um, horizontal heights here. All right, it's just the top graph minus the bottom one. All right, so we can use the same formula with f of x is equal to e to x and g of x is equal to x. All right. So your bottom bound of integration is 0, your top bound is 1. So area from 0 to 1, top graph minus the bottom graph. Well, what's the integral of e to the x? That's just e to the x. What is the integral of x? Well, that's just x squared over 2. So you get e to the x minus 1 half x squared between 0 and 1. Plugging them in, you plug 1 in, you plug 0 in. And this is simply the area, just like that. All right, not too bad. That one was pretty straightforward. Um, but obviously, you can see the key here was seeing what the graph is. Once you figure out what the graph is, you know, then it kind of falls into place. All right, let's do a trig one. All right, this one's a, this one's a lot more complicated, okay? And the graph is going to be incredibly important to figure this out. All right, so find the area of the region bounded by the curves y is equal to sine of x and y is equal to cosine of x. Okay, so the two basic trig functions, sine and cosine, between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 half. All right, so this is a little bit crazy. This is what gets a little bit hard. All right, the points of intersection occur when, all right, um, sine of x is equal to cosine of x. So if you look here in this um, kind of red, pink color here, that's cosine of x, all right? I'm graphing it between 0 and pi over 2. And then here, in, in, in blue, or turquoise here, you have sine. You'll notice that they intersect at pi over 4 here. And this is where it gets a little crazy. The first area, cosine is on top, and sine is on bottom. But then in the second area, sine is on top, and cosine is on bottom. So what that means is you're going to have to find the two areas separately, okay? And then you're going to have to find the two areas together. All right, or find, once you find the two areas, you add them together. So the first area you're going to integrate with cosine on top, sine on bottom. The second area you're going to integrate with sine on top, cosine on bottom. 
So the first area of integration will go from 0 to pi over 4. That's this area. And then the second area will go from pi over 4 to pi over 2, this area right here. All right, so let me shed, set it up for you with integrals. So therefore, the required area is this. You're going to have area 1, okay, from 0 to pi over 4, cosine of x minus sine of x. All right, let me go back and show you that. So from 0 to pi over 4, it's the top graph, cosine of x, minus the bottom graph, sine of x, plus area over 2, from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Now sine is on top, minus the bottom graph, cosine of x. Sine on top, cosine on bottom. All right, this is pretty easy to integrate. You know, obviously cosine integrates as sine. Sine integrates as negative cosine. That's how I got the plus there, from 0 to pi over 4. I'm going to add to it sine integrates to negative cosine. Cosine integrates to sine, so that's why the minus is there. And then you literally just have to do your fundamental theorem of calculus and plug in your um, bounds of integration. So when I plug in pi over 4, this is what I get. When I plug in 0, this is what I get. When I plug in pi over 2 here into these guys, this is what I get. When I plug pi over 4 in here, this is what I get. Um, and when you go through all the craziness here, I'll let you do that on your own, but it was simply simplifies right to that. All right, so let me just say one few other things, key points here. Um, draw the graph, let the graph figure it out, um, how you're gonna set it up, find where they intersect, bounds of integration, and then top graph minus the bottom graph. All right, guys, uh, thanks, and that'll be your um, video for here. I encourage you to watch the uh, rest of the videos, the optional ones that I have posted as there's a ton. And if you have any questions, let me know.